Good morning, everybody. Whenever you get this, uh, yesterday I had that really ch nice chance, at least for me, to make a video with you about calm and peace and using uh, the ICE method and kind of sharing some different things. Heard a lot of nice comments on it, uh, and I appreciate that a lot. It's really nice to be in contact together, especially during these times. Boy, things are moving so fast here in Washington. Yesterday, all the restaurants and bars were closed, and a lot of you know that I'm a chicken farmer. And kind of the special thing about our farm is that uh, all of the food that we feed them has been from uh, restaurants and breweries and grocery stores and things like that. So all the different restaurants now, and I don't know about the brewery, we'll see, uh, but those food supplies have, uh, will cease here uh, after I probably pick up the next day or two. So lots of changes for me, tiny little guy, not so big, added all up on the whole society, amazing. What I wanted to do was just uh, check in on calm. Maybe I'll do this often. We'll see how it goes. But um, I realized I woke up this morning and my mind just started going right into the stuff that was here for the day. And like I was explaining yesterday, I invite you to go back and uh, check out that video if you, if you didn't see it or if you're interested in this. Just how our mind can can really spend all its time out in that place of reactivity to what's going on. And that's absolutely and completely fine. But that we can also bring our awareness into this place of calm. And so I just wanted to check in with you. How's your calm today? So when I woke up this morning, I was much more calm than yesterday. I told you what had been going on. You know, I was trying to help prevent these meetings of people. And uh, by today, they're illegal. <laughs> so. Um, it's amazing how quickly things are moving. Still today, thinking about all these things, the economic impacts are huge. Uh, I haven't even really looked at what's happening today yet in the markets, in the economy, but enormous implications there as well. The virus is moving and spreading so fast. Hospitals are filling up. The death counts are rising. Um, Italy is an absolute tragedy. Where is your awareness right now? And where is it coming from? That was yesterday's uh, video. Again, invite you to go back to it. I put the link down in the bottom of this video. I hope it shows up. And so this is a check-in now for you to just notice if you want. My mind went immediately when I woke up to all the stuff that I was talking to you about. And before I even got up, I was laying in bed and making that choice, which I said, I think is like the most powerful choice we can make where we choose to put our awareness. And sometimes I just look from one corner of the bedroom to the other and I can see the space and physically feel the difference in my body and that's happening right now as I look at the space between myself and the wall that's in front of me. And so I just wanted to share with you again, that little exercise, that process and invite you, um, I'll try to make these once in a while, maybe even daily, just as a quick reminder for you, first few minutes of each video getting your awareness back to a place that it's coming out of the space with nothing in it, non-reactivity, fight, flight, freeze turned off. The place I would like to talk about is where everything comes from, the source of it all, the non-duality before we come into all of this reactivity. And I found and helped to share with many people who live their lives from this place of non-reactivity. Still active, still doing things, still feeding chickens or whatever it is. But life can come from the awareness of this place. So look at this finger and just look at it. You just took your awareness from all of the events in the world and history and everything that's coming and you put it right there. 
Wow. That's a simpler way of being to put your awareness on a single thing. And if your mind drifts off to all the other stuff we were talking about or whatever's going on in your life, just bring it back here. Amazing chemical physiological differences are happening in your body and your brain right now. Look at this finger. You can be putting your own fingers up or you can just look at the ones that I'm putting up here on the video. Okay, so you look at this second point. Starting to feel it, I do. And now look at the space that's between the two points where there's nothing. Now in back of it, of course, I'm sitting here talking and stuff, but you can imagine, and that's all that really matters. Imagine with your awareness, this space here that has nothing in it. When you do that, you become a reaction to nothing. Everything else in your life is a reaction to something and your awareness and your energy goes to that something and it's perfectly fine. I'm pretty sure that's the nature of being human interacting with the world and the environment, but it's also okay and actually fundamentally different to react to nothing. Nothing is the only something that doesn't have anything in it. And your fight, flight, freeze, stress response just turns off because the something that it's always reacting to is nothing. The lack of anything. The space. Feel it? Like I was describing yesterday, that subtle feeling of difference in your body, whatever it is for you. Right, that one woman whose shoulders were always like this, and when we did this, they went like that. It's pretty easy to tell. If you play with this enough, you'll notice this feeling for yourself, and it'll be a dependable and repeatable feeling. When I'm not in this space now, it feels odd to me. But I remember when I first started to feel this space, how odd it felt to me. And I realized, gosh, you know, everybody said, oh, Lars, you're such a calm guy. But as I started to do this, I realized, wow, Lars, there's this underlying level of sadness, or not sadness, but anger that I just became aware of. And when I finally kind of started to settle in here, what a different feeling that was from any feeling I'd had in my life. Hmm. All right. That's the calm check-in. Yeah, the piece we're going to play with the pendulum a little bit if you got the time. If you got to get busy and go somewhere, which um, less and less are we going to be busy having to get somewhere right away? <clears throat> you can actually bring calm to pieces of your life that have stored upsets or to upsets that are uh, with you right now about what's going on with all the current events with the virus in the world and everything. What we've done so far is simply to take your attention from reactivities into this space. If you actually want to make a lasting permanent difference on the synapses and the brain connections of, of your both your brain and your nervous system, you need to do one more simple thing. Yesterday I described a pendulum that goes back and forth. Let's say this side was where you were in your reactivity, your upset, either about something happening right now or about something all the way back from when you were three years old. It doesn't matter. 
And then we took our attention and we brought it over to the space of calm. Okay, so we've done that so far. Now you can just hang out here forever and never look over there. But we haven't changed anything on the level of our biology, of the way we've stored our experience in the environment that we've lived in for however many years we've lived. You wanna do that? It's actually very simple. Go back to yesterday's video and get the scientific explanation of memory reconsolidation. You can get the shamanic um, example of sitting by the fire. EMDR is a current process that uses this awareness of memory reconsolidation. But at its base, it's as simple as going back and forth with awareness between this calm state and whatever the upset state is. So what it is, what is it in your life that's not calm right now? It can be current events or anything. Just notice it. Notice how it feels in your body. There's three things to notice. How it feels in your body. Does it bring up any memories in your mind? And is there an emotion, typically anger or fear or sadness? And then once you've noticed that, take your awareness, this incredible tool, and just say, you know, I'll come back in a second and go over here to this calm space. Feel it. Space between yourself and the screen, between yourself and the wall. Look out a window. Here's yourself and whatever it is you see out there. A mountain, a tree, a window, a car. Like I said, over a thousand different chemical reactions happen between that place there and this place here. So it's tempting to want to stay here and there's nothing wrong with that, but then that becomes an effort to avoid what's over here. You can actually replace all the stuff over here with this chemistry of calm. You'll remember the events, no matter what they were, but your retelling of them will be now from a, an emotional place of calm. And that calm will store in the synapses of your brain and your nervous system. And things that once triggered you will no longer trigger you. It's not a denial of them happening, but the emotional reactivity has been replaced with emotional calm. And all, you don't have to remember any of that. You don't have to believe it again. Like I said yesterday, over and over again, you just do this. Okay. Identified the upset over here to calm. Now, where do you go? You take your attention and you put it exactly back where it was. If the upset was that, you know, your brother painted your old childhood teenage car red instead of blue, then you go back to that piece. You don't go back to the part where, you know, he popped the tires one night by go riding over a curb. No, because that wasn't what was there. You just go back to the exact thing that was there before. And you don't try to fix it. You just notice it. But what what happens is that when you identify that upset, you activate it. And its activation time is four to six hours before it basically resets in your brain the same old way it was before, unless you do something different in the storage process. The restorage process, the reconsolidation. You're reconsolidating this memory differently by bringing in calm. So you activate the memory, you go get the calm, and you bring it back to the exact thing. That's what there is to do. That's the way I live my life. And that's what I share with other people. It doesn't mean I'm always calm, but I tell you there's a lot more calm in my life, lots, lots, lots more because of this process. Because cumulatively, every time something becomes calm, it no longer has the capacity to trigger you.
when I was making podcasts, which I hope to get back to at some point before too long again. But <clears throat> during that time, I got a bunch of new baby chicks and uh, a thousand of them, actually. And the weather then got really cold and I screwed up with putting the water in the wrong place and the chicks got wet that night. And the next morning I came back to the farm and there were 72 dead chicks. And I was the only one here in the farm that day in March. No, it was in February. And sometimes the inversion layer comes and we're just basically in fog here. And it was one of those days and nobody else was here. And I took all those chicks out to the compost pile and buried them. And then I'm giving you an example, right, of an upset here. And the process that I used just because like this is what I've been doing now for years and I went and sat in the truck because it was just freezing cold outside and at the time we didn't have any any place to go inside other than that truck turned the engine on turned the heat on and just let myself feel it and this this strong feeling of shame came up it's like not just that I had done something bad but that like I was bad and this feeling of the emotion was sadness. And I used this process all day long. I went walking in the cold, crispy snow in that fog with the dogs. And I just kept paying attention back and forth. I didn't stay over here, although that would have been easy to do, stay over here in that feeling of shame, right? But I knew enough and had enough experience and had enough practice. And that's really why I'm visiting with you in case you're interested in this. We're going to have time in this isolation time that if you're interested in learning this process, you know, you can, you can bring this into your life. And I was so thankful I had it that day. So I'd feel it. And hard as it was, I like, okay, I'll come back to that. I take my awareness out to this space, look between myself and the, the tree that looked gray because the fog was so tight and close. See the space, let myself come into that awareness. Go back into the exact piece of the experience that I had identified before. If it was the piece about the water, it was that. But pieces came up about my childhood, memories, different things. Whatever it was, you go back to that last thing. Why? Because that's the thing that's activated in the moment. You're literally going out and grabbing a different chemical composition for it, the chemistry of calm. You bring it in here. And four to six hours later, when that memory re-glues down, there's calm inside of it. And when you go back to that memory, the emotion that you feel is the emotion of calm. And the test for that was the next day I drove up to those chickens and there was like 36 or 38 more that had died from the cold. And there was no feeling of shame. It wasn't like I was happy and yippy skippy, but I had reconsolidated those feelings of shame. And I was shocked. I was shocked that it worked because in the moment, in that first time of finding all those dead baby chicks that were frozen, I didn't expect that I'd be able to be in a calm place. I actually wrote about this and went to my poetry friend who helps me with writing and it didn't grab him because he didn't believe it. I wrote the next day I came back to the farm calm and that was the truth, but that's not a believable thing, right? For most of us, it's not believable that we can have this actual process for bringing calm into our lives that's as predictable and powerful as that. Not magic, but literally the way human beings function on the level of brain, on the level of shamans, on the level of science. You don't have to believe any of that. I'm just inviting you to do it if you're interested in experiencing 
the bringing of calm permanently into your memories. Why does it stay this way? Well, the reason it stays this way, think back to an early childhood memory that when you go to it, it still has a charge on it. Well, that's how permanent they are. Unless you find a way to interrupt the process of what you've stored in your life and what you're experiencing in your life, it'll stay that anger piece. This is the interruption and replacement process, right? You activate that memory by just paying attention to it. Why did he paint that car red? I'm so angry. Over to calm. Actually, he didn't do that. My brother would never do that. Take this calm. It's like, and then you go back to the same exact spot. Oh, I'm so angry that my brother created, you know, painted that car red instead of blue. And you feel what you feel. You're not actually trying to do anything. You're not trying to change it. And something else may come up next time you come back about the tires or whatever, or some different emotion. But this one, the one that you came back to, the one that you brought calm to, that little piece inside your brain, it's that way. Now you can do that with the current events of, don't touch your, don't touch your face these days, right? It's funny, like now when I'm outside and I get itches and I was always touching my face. I'm actually, I practiced for a long time. I'm aware of them. It's just, I let myself have them be reminders of what's going on in the world, all the people who are going through this. I just let myself feel it. And then of course that one goes away and another one comes up. Then when I get home and I'm all clean, it's like oh, such a luxury now just to like be able to scratch an itch on my face or something. Things are changing, aren't they? All right, well, um, I do invite you to swing this pendulum if you find it useful. I see a couple people in the stream that I've spent some time with doing this. And maybe some people will wanna share like the difference it makes for them. It is, I agree, quite unbelievable from the outside of the experience. But from the inside of it, don't believe it, just try it, just do it. From the inside of the experience, a marvelous thing. So how are you feeling now? Notice how you're feeling. And if you brought yourself from here to here, from the upset side to the calm side and you're feeling better, that's great. Hopefully I'll be able to come back and we can do this uh, regularly now during this time. But if not, you can watch these videos or just get it into your life so you can do this for yourself whenever it happens. That you notice yourself not in this calm place. Driving in the car, less frequent now, but I used to love just, you know, the little windshield wiper nozzles. One point, two point, space between, look out to the road ahead. Wow, calm. And then we'll be talking more about this if this all works out, but notice now you're over here in calm. And a lot of times that's kind of our goal. And if you wanna make that calm last, if you wanna make it per, uh, permanent to the issue that's upsetting, you need to bring it back into the actual activated specific upset that you're dealing with. Replace it. If you imagine your life as a pendulum and live your life in this process, don't believe it, just do it for a while. I'd love to hear your experience. All right, so I'm thinking about my day. I need to get a tire change because I got a screw that went through one of the wheels on the trailer. And I don't want anybody sitting in my car when I go down to the car place and get the tire repaired. And I figure out how to do that. I'm gonna call the guy who sells commercial grain because I don't think I'm gonna be able to pick up my waste food very much longer. Right? So adapting into living into 
this time. And the pieces that end up being upsets during the day for me, I may not remember it at the time. They may just be upset for a few moments or a few hours or a few days. But when, like in the thick skull, it comes back, oh, Lars, remember you try to talk about all this stuff about calm? Ah, when that happens, identify the upset, the emotion, how it feels in the body, the experience. Swing the pendulum over here. Swing it back. Give it a shot. Let's, uh, let's stay in touch. I appreciate it. It was so lovely to hear from uh, folks yesterday. I really appreciated it. So love you all. It's a good thing to say in these days. Blessings and peace. See you soon. Bye.